This is NFR Central from Next Gen Rodeo Media, powered by Rodeo Logistics, and we get a chance to highlight women in rodeo. Clay Dean's next to me. That's uh, my colleague and partner and co-anchor, Lindsay Sumter, who also happens to be the commissioner of the Women's Rodeo World Championships, and her colleague and partner, uh, my friend Sammy Joe uh, Smith, joining us. And, Lindsay, I want to start this way. Women in rodeo have always played a major role. You go back 100 years, some of the greatest old pictures you find are women riding saddle bronc horses. But women in rodeo are experiencing an, ex experiencing an explosion right now, and the WRWC is part of that. 100%. It's long underserved, though. It should have happened a long time ago, and – um, you know, women historically, like you said, have been um, in the forefront, whether it be, you know, the show of them getting on bucking horses and rope and steers back in the 1800s to secretaries and then barrel racing. Um, you know, but recently, since about 2019, we'd have we've had the explosion of the breakaway roping. But it should have happened, in my opinion, a long time ago. And and even more now, it needs to be brought to the attention of equal money and equality across the board for the ladies in the industry. One of my favorite quotes, Steve, is J.J. Hampton saying, when I was little, my dad would tell me, if I had balls, I'd be a millionaire now. So, <laughs> I, But it's true, right? These women, they've been roping and going down the road, going to jackpots, but the game is changing now. And with WCRA and Women's Rodeo R World Championship leading the charge of that, it is really cool now for us to have a front row seat to seeing the game change. So speaking of that, let's talk a little bit about the Women's Rodeo World Championship Finals. It's held in Fort Worth, and, you know, from what I'm hearing, Cowboy Stadium, tell us about that. The cowgirls are taking over. Yeah. <laughs> so um, we will have our preliminary rounds and our semifinals rounds at Cowtown Coliseum. And then from there, the 12 ladies, because the Women's Rodeo World Championship, we listened and we heard the ladies say that they didn't want to run their horses back to back, you know, in, in the long round, you know, in the championship round and then in the head to head for the big money. So what we did in the barrel racing, we allowed it to only be the 12 girls that make it to the championship round. So the 12 ladies in the barrel race will go on Saturday, no, Friday, um, the 18th at, at, Cowboys Col at Cowboy Coliseum. This is all in May. This is all in May. Right. Um, so the top 12 in the barrel race will go on Friday, and the top three in the team roping and the top three in the breakaway will go um, with the PBR World Finals at Cowboy Stadium on Saturday. Okay, so for the women out there, you got pros and challengers, right? Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about what that is and how the difference in the two can get qualified for the Women's Rodeo World Championship. Yeah, so it's been really neat. Since the first year of Women's Rodeo World Championship, we started by – you came and you qualified by the leaderboard or you entered in the open. But Explain the leaderboard. Yeah, What's that so, mean? so in order to qualify to compete at the Women's Rodeo World Championship, it's a year-long race now. So you can download the Women's Rodeo app, go into the VRQ, the Virtual Rodeo Qualifier, create yourself a profile, and then any event that you compete at, whether that's a big rodeo, it could be a jackpot, to us it doesn't matter. As long as we can find the results online, then you can compete and pay a nomination fee. So that's divisionalized. You pay anywhere from $25 to $200. And based on how you place at that event, we award you points, and then you get on our leaderboard. But we now classify you as either a pro or a challenger inside of each discipline that you compete in. So barrel racers annually, if you've earned less than $30,000, and $100,000 in lifetime, we base it off of Equistat right now, um, you're a challenger. And in the breakaway, it's less than 10,000 annually and 30,000 in lifetime. And then team roping, if you're a four and a half or less, you qualify to compete as a challenger. When you look at the virtual rodeo qualifier, it can be a little bit intimidating and kind of daunting because it's new to rodeo, right? Yeah. And change in rodeo is a challenge. Yeah. Um, you know, historically, we kind of don't like to change things up. But if you're sitting at the blackjack table, we're in Vegas, and you, dr and you get two aces, you split, and you double down your money, right? So think of it in the sense that if you're going to a jackpot, you've already paid your fuel, you've already paid your fees, you've already done all of the things to get there, double down your chances to get yourself on the leaderboard. So nominate those events that you're already going to. 
when you get to Women's Rodeo World Championship, there's not an entry fee. So if you're going to go to a rodeo or a jackpot that adds, say, 10000 and the fees are $500, that's what you know you're going to put up. Mm -hmm. So think about your nomination fees in that mindset of, I'm willing to put up 1000 1500 1200 5000 I don't care what it is, so I get a chance to go rope for $750,000 added, $183,000 in each discipline. So if you're going to go to a rodeo that adds $183,000 in the team roping as a header and a healer, equal money on both sides, you're going to put some money up. So with that being said, we're you know here in Vegas, we got the all-in barrel race going on. Let's just take, for example, young kid, Bella Skinner. Mm -hmm. So her parents or herself, she can go on there and nominate and earn points to get on the leader bi leaderboard for another event for Big Carrot, right? So pros, challengers, nominations, leaderboard, how many do you take from each? Yeah, so it's a year-long race, like I said. Our segment ends April 14th of 2024. And if you're in the top 20 of your class and your discipline, you qualify to compete at the Women's Rodeo World Championship. And um, what's the total payout of that? Wasn't it like 800000 last year? Well, uh, it's, it's a little bit more than the 750000 that's added. Okay. Because um, we do have the last chance qualifier, and new to 2024 is going to be that we have partnered up with Cowgirl Gathering, and we've added the last chance qualifier as a side pot. So less runs on your horse, less runs on your calf horse, barrel horse, team roping horses, whatever. You enter that side pot. It gives you th your nomination fee with the entry fee to – to the last chance qualifier, which if you're not in the top 20, you can enter that last chance qualifier to try to get into Women's Rodeo World Championship. So we don't know exactly what the payout could potentially be, sure. you know, hmm. overall. With the with the last chance qualifier, we added another 12,000? Yeah, so I want to camp on this for a second yeah. because <laughs> <laughs> Next Gen truly, like, not to plug – yeah, but anyway, Next Gen <laughs> has really stepped up and said, here we are. These girls can enter the Cowgirl Gathering, pay their open entry fee, but we're going to offer this women's package, right? You kind of think of it like a side pot. Mm -hmm. So if you are going to Cowgirl Gathering, you enter the open barrel race, you pay your entry fee. At the time of entry, you can pay $150 towards this women's package. Now let's talk about what that gets you. You get an entry fee into a side pot, $50 paid 100% back on site and then you get a nomination towards that side pot you get a nomination towards the open and if you're not qualified towards the women's rodeo world championship you're now eligible to earn an advancement into women's rodeo world championship a couple wow. days later so and a qualifier series spot for 25. yes and a qualifier so five for 150 dollars you're putting your name in the hat for five opportunities and also getting to compete at the cowgirl gathering for their money so to use Lindsay's example, you just drew five aces. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. All I know, Steve, is they just said a lot. It didn't yeah. sound like much money. <laughs> yeah. It's it's here's here's the thing about it, Lindsay. You, I, I, I guess I'm curious about two things. The role of the PBR in all of this. Mm -hmm. PBR has been a has played a major role in reaching out to help to create some new opportunities here for women in rodeo. A hundred percent. They, um, Sean Gleason and Gary McKinney were at. Chicago, yep. They were at Chicago and, uh, you know, having a conversation, and they said, we need to do something for, for the ladies in, in the industry. You know, when they they saw Jackie win there at, at the Windy City, and, and they thought they needed to do something, so they went ahead and said, well, we're going to we're gonna add, we're going to be the largest female rodeo in the world. We're going to add 750000 So the PBR and the WCRA are the parent companies of Women's Rodeo World Championship. And with the guidance of what the PBR has done for the sport and, and growing bull riding, but then now they're looking at rodeo and, and finding ways and partnering with the WCRA to grow the sport and get more money into these cowboy and cowgirls pockets. But really, the PBR is focused and 100% dedicated to Women's Rodeo World Championship. As I remember that week in May, is you mentioned the Cowgirl Gathering mm -hmm. is huge for mm -hmm. women in rodeo between the Cowtown Coliseum in Fort Worth and what's happening at AT&T Stadium in Dallas, right? Yeah, Mayor Maggie Parker last year, um, Maddie, yeah. Maddie, I'm sorry, um, she gave us um, a proclamation for the week of women's rodeo 
that week alone when the Cowgirl Gathering went ahead and um, switched their dates to kind of partner with Women's Rodeo World Championship, it was, you know, proclamated the, the week of Women's Rodeo um, World Championship. And that week alone, $1.145 million goes to ladies, natural born female athletes. In year one, if I may, yeah. Lindsay and I have a goal and a mission with the support of our, our parent companies and our sister companies to continue growing this Women's Week. And you may not qualify in that top 20, but as Lindsay mentioned, you have the last chance opportunity. You also have the Cowgirl Gathering to compete at. And we want to continue bringing more opportunities to the ladies that week because it is a lot to take the week off of work to you know, load up your family if they're not living right there in Texas. So for us, we want them to really camp out and have an awesome week and a lot of opportunity. I brought it up for that exact reason, Sammy Joe, because um, if you are a barrel racer, if you're a breakaway roper, there are some incredibly talent, wi talented women team ropers out there. Um, if you are one of those cowgirls, you might want to think about being in Fort Worth, Texas that third week in the month of May. Well, you know, and uh, Steve also, you know, you got the PRCA. You got to be 18 or older, right, to compete mm -hmm. to, for all that type of money. And Women's Rodeo last year, what, w the winner got 60000 from mm -hmm. each discipline. Is that correct? Yep. You know, and there's kids can compete in this, right? Uh, 13 years old or older um, to, co to compete. But that week, we, like, our vision of that week is to make that week feel like what happens in Vegas. Sure. You know, we want it. We, we we have fashion shows. We have exchanges. We have speakers, and um, you know, just to have this atmosphere of a way to really incorporate every avenue of female um, rodeo athletes or enthusiasts. Um, you know, we want it to be where women are planners. You know, you can say, okay, the week of May, the 13th through the 19th, I'm going to take that week off. I'm going to go down there. Um, we're going to get a VRBO or we're going to stay at a hotel and we're going to enjoy the experience of everything that's going on. Take on a night at the PBR World Finals. See the best bull riders in the world. See the best female rodeo athletes in the world. Um, go to the fashion show. Um, go see, you know, music and, and all of I the, the National Cowgirl Hall of Fame and Museum. If you haven't been there, we did a beautiful breakfast with them um, for our champions breakfast. The ladies that qualified for the for the championship round. And it was, it was just, it had the, it did almost get, got you like welled up just for the, the history that's in that building and how hard they work to celebrate women. And that's, that's our, that's what we want to do. This year will be the how manyth year of the WRWC? This is fourth. Fourth. This um, year. Did we start during COVID? We did. Mm -hmm. Started well, here in Vegas. No, right? so first year was in Texas, Fort then Worth. COVID hit. Oh, okay. Then got we it. went to gotcha. Vegas and okay. went to the South Point, and then we've now done two years. Well, we'll be doing two years back in Texas. Yeah. Awesome. So 24 is four. Yeah. Yeah. And wow. the growth has just been outstanding, right? If you look at percentage wise, hasn't it just got bigger, bigger, bigger? It really has. And, and that's where the need for the last chance qualifier really came up because. You do. It, it takes work throughout the year to make it in that top 20. It's not too late. You can still nominate and earn a lot of points. But for that last chance, we want everybody to come. We're actually talking to um, Kelsey Love Hope of doing a clinic that week as well. So, yeah, it, the, the goal is really to make it where every type of cowgirl can come and enjoy Women's Week during the PBR World Finals. And there's pretty much anything for it, all types of cowgirls. Well, I think there's one more piece that um, – from my understanding that we haven't talked about yet that's, I think, very important. So you have just the nominations you talked about, right, you know, where you could go to an event, you go to rodeo, and you can nominate. But isn't there, like, an alliance program that producers can become a part of? Yeah. Like tell us a little bit about what the alliance program is and how it's good for the producers out there and for their contestants. You know, say they're putting on a barrel race or a team roping up in Missouri or yeah. Illinois or somewhere. You know, what does that look like, and who could they contact to become an alliance partner? Yeah, so to your point, there's actually three ways to qualify. We've talked about the two, being on the leaderboard and coming to the last chance. The third is going to a qualifier series event and competing at these alliance produced okay. events. So we put on eight. Um, and what you do there, too, is if you nominate, you're the highest nominated athlete. Whether you're in or outside of the top 20, you've guaranteed yourself a spot into Women's Rodeo World Championship. Okay, so let's stop there. There's eight qualifying series in each discipline? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, and if they nominate, and if they're the highest placing nominator, mm -hmm. they're in. Mm -hmm. They're in, regardless, they're in. even if they were second in the 2D, but they sure. were the highest nominated okay. athlete 
in the pro and in the challenge. Exactly. Yep. Okay. So we, we work with these producers to answer your question. If you're interested in this, um, the best thing to do is reach out to Rob Smets. He's our alliance manager. So his emails are smets at wcrarodeo.com. Um, but yeah, reach out. And we do have different levels of alliances. Okay. The more, you know, Next Gen is a great partner to work with to help you run your event, take your entries. Um, and that also allows you to be a higher level producer um, where we award expanded points is what we call it. Okay. So um, girls, even if they're not in the money and around, we may award points to 20 places if you're a silver level alliance event. So working with us that way, um, it just allows for everything to run smoother. If you're getting us our results, we can get those in faster and award the points faster and there is a lot that next gen can offer with entries so yeah it is a good partnership you know one last question i have about that you mentioned the cowgirl gathering and the special package and i've seen you done that at a few other races like tammy kids wild west promotion races tell us a little bit more in detail on what that package is and how it's different than just nominating we, when we sat down with everyone, we always are trying to find a ways to benefit the athletes. Okay. Um, to go ahead and, and build that package to allow them to have a discounted nomination. Okay. Um, and have a nomination for two, uh, like a two for one kind of okay. situation where they can still win money right then. They enter that. They can, you know, the money goes back into the side pods. Another opportunity for, for a check. So they get a return on their investment mm -hmm. right there. Right, right there. there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nice. So they can get a check right there, you know, return on investment, like you said. And then they get nomination for the side pot, nomination for the open race. I mean, it's, it's just another way to try to benefit the athletes. We hear that it's hard to, you know, put the money up on the nomination fees. We totally hear it, and we, ex we understand it. Um, and so this was just another way to kind of help benefit the athletes uh, the, the best that we can. And so the producer, too. Yeah. I think so are there yeah. producers that can, you know, get these packages? Mm -hmm. uh, who do they contact? Rob, Sammy Joe, you? Who do yeah, they I think for that one, better to reach out to me at sjsmith at wcrrodeo.com. Okay. 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 Awesome. Awesome. Um, where should people go to find more? They so can yeah. definitely <laughs> go on our social medias to find more information. Okay. Um, we try to do wi Women's Wednesdays every couple of weeks just to be informative. And Wait, what's Women's Wednesdays? <laughs> when you what's have Women's Wednesday? You don't have coffee with us on Women's Wednesday in the morning? <laughs> I don't drink coffee. I drink Monsters. Well, y I drink a Monster while I'm on there a lot of the times. <laughs> but um, no, uh, our Facebook, our Instagram, but then we have um, wrwc.rodeo is our website. And you can go on the website and find all the information about how to become a challenger, how to become a pro. If you need to be um, categorized between those two as a team or as a breakaway, rope or a barrel racer because obviously the team roping we go off the number system but um yeah, really just a website and our in our social yeah i think it's important too for girls to know that there is a process with when you nominate we update our leaderboard every thursday afternoon so you may compete at an event on saturday your points will be applied every thursday yeah. and then with the um, classifications we have a team that the week that you nominate there will be about a four-day delay but then they'll reach out to you to verify like we have you as either a pro or challenger and the girls are given time to dispute that but um, it's it's a really good process and we also have the women's rodeo app that they can download as well I, I want to say though I sometimes you'll have that well I don't want to be a challenger there is there is a benefit to being in the challenger um, because you know not necessarily that a challenger isn't as good as a pro but I, I could take myself, for instance, the first two Women's Rodeo World Championships I competed at, and then the last um, two I have been the commissioner. So I went to Vegas. I came to Fort Worth um, for the first one, and then I competed in Vegas, and I was a challenger in the breakaway roping at both of those because I don't rodeo for a living. I, I'm, a, I'm a rodeo coach, or and I'm still a rodeo coach and now commissioner, but I don't didn't spend a lot of my time trying to earn a living with a rope. So I, you know, my, my, I call it outs, my opportunities to win money. I would go to five or six amateur rodeos all summer, win two or 3,000 and, and kind of fly under the radar and stayed in the challenger. You know, now I go to more ropings and stuff, but now I'm a pro. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> but there's not a negative connotation to being a challenger roper. Go to the WRWC's website, social media, the WCRA's website, social media. You can find out all about it. May 13th through the 19th is 
maybe becoming the biggest week of the year for women in rodeo. That's our plan. That's we'll see plan. you there. Yeah, we'll, we'll see you in there. Fort Worth. Um, Sammy Joe, it's good to see you. You too. And Lindsay, thank you. Thank you. And Clay. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate it. Uh, thank you for joining us uh, from NFR Central on Next Gen Rodeo Media, powered by Rodeo Logistics.